Caesar. Hi, welcome back to Take Us McGinnis Elder Care Law Hour. I'm Barbara McGinnis, and we're talking about love, love in the later life, and things that you need to think about as you're getting married, perhaps uh, for a second or third time, even when it comes to veterans' benefits. Right, and I'm Tim Takis, your co-host, and in this segment we are talking about divorce, death, or remarriage in the context uh, of veterans' benefits, VA pension, DIC, compensation and all those subjects that our next guest, our associate attorney Chris Johnson, you know, will be talking about. Chris came to us with 19 years of experience, legal experience, believe it or not, you don't look like 19 <laughs> years of experience. Legal and military experience. Yeah, in addition to that, Chris is also a veteran himself. So welcome, Chris. Welcome. Thank you, Tim. Um, the benefit that we deal with most is the veteran's pension, or as some people refer to it, is the aid and attendance benefit. That's correct. Uh, can you share with us a little bit more about what that is and what the and who qualifies? Absolutely. So it's a be, it's a benefit that's there for veterans who qualify both financially and then if you look at the aid and attendance portion of it for medical qualification. So I, I consider it like a two layered cake. And the first one is the financial and military qualifications for veterans that are 65 years of age or older or 100% disabled. Uh, 90 days of active duty service with at least one day in a wartime period and a discharge that's other than dishonorable. Right. And once they have those, then they look at the financial criteria. And currently the cap for wealth for your net assets is $127,061. And if you are below that, and then what they do is they have a maximum annual pension rate, and it depends on your status. Are you single? Are you married? How many dependents do you have? and then they will look at different amounts and are you the surviving spouse or are you the veteran themselves? And then that they will dial in what we call the baseline non-service connected pension. And then they can look at your medical issues and if you need a, two assistance with two activities of daily living, dressing, bathing, toileting, ambulating, feeding yourself and the like, then they will look at putting an additional layer on that pension known as aid and attendance. And that's what most people affectionately refer to the program as. Right. Mm -hmm. So how much money are we talking about? What's the monthly allowance in these, in these you know, you mentioned several categories. Right. Well, the max category can be up to $24,000 a year. So you can get a stipend of a little over $2,200 a month if you're a married veteran and you need aid and attendance. And that, as anyone can imagine, can have a real big financial impact. So let's say you have, you know, because a, a very common scenario in our office is you have a married couple, one of them who is, you know, significantly maybe impaired. Right. They move to assisted living, which right. might run at five thousand or six thousand dollars a month for the couple. Right. Uh, so maybe if the spouse is a veteran, that's uh, twenty-four thousand dollars or two thousand dollars a month. Oh, it's or, a, or more than that, $2,200 a month to cover that cost. That's right. And when you think about it, the impact, the VA did put some thought into where they dialed in. Because I think, you know, a lot of the uh, spouses, one will have a pension or a Social Security uh, check that's coming in that's right around fifteen or 1600 And then another one has one that's maybe just close to 1000 So that what do you have right there? You have 2500 and you add another 2200 in there. And look at that. All of a sudden, your assisted living facility bill is covered and that's exactly what it's dialed mm -hmm. there for right mm -hmm. now if you're the surviving spouse though it, it, it's a, lo a lower benefit that's right so if it's if you're just the surviving spouse you're looking at around seven hundred ninety dollars just for meeting the financial criteria and then you can get upwards to thirteen hundred dollars a month if you meet the aid and attendance criteria as well mm -hmm. it has less of an impact but they understand that the, the program is obviously centered for veterans but it wa does not want to leave the family members behind obviously right. now what if you're divorced so if you're divorced, there's a short answer and a long answer. Okay, let's have the short one and then we'll give you we'll give you the long one. <laughs> there we go. So the short answer is if you're divorced, the odds are in most cases it severs the benefits. Like anything else under the law, there's always a few caveats and carve outs okay. and whatnot. And so the most common was it one is after nineteen seventy one if your remarriage is terminated prior to ni uh, November 1st, 1990, as I recall, uh, then they will count that as your uh, your status for benefits will revert to the original spouse. It's an unusual carve out and that's for the non-service connected pension. Then there are other carve outs. So after 19, October 1st, 1998 for, uh, and I want to make sure I get this correct, for the dependence indemnity compensation. If you are, your remarriage is terminated after 1998, 
you are eligible for that benefit. Right. So the lesson here is is that it's it always it depends. It always so depends. that's why you need to seek somebody who knows this stuff. That's exactly it, and that's one of my favorite answers. Don't always say that you can't qualify. Well, you're divorced and you, or you got divorced and you can't qualify. And that always depends. That's the nightmare that I always hear when I have a client who's come in who has been told previously no you don't qualify or they will look and when you look at it maybe at that moment they didn't qualify but maybe there was some very basic planning tools that could have been done to qualify them or sometimes people just don't get into the weeds on those little caveats and carve outs they're there for a reason and you need someone who is educated in the area in the field gotcha yeah so you mentioned DIC, mm -hmm. a little more explanation about what there. that is. So that is for surviving spouse, surviving children of a veteran who either died on active duty or died as a, a cause of their active duty service. So I think the common one that we would think of right now is those that passed because of Agent Orange exposure in Vietnam. And, okay. so, and so dependency and indemnity compensation equals DIC. Equals DIC, okay, that's great. correct. So we call it DIC, that's just right. so people know. That. And there's been a great expansion. Uh, just this past week, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit actually put out a very big decision involving the Asian Orange part for that, and that is they've expanded the presumptive exposure to those serving offshore, which ca uh, captures a lot of naval personnel that might not otherwise have been given that presumptive that presumption. Uh, otherwise and that will probably provide a lot of good benefits for naval people who served in Vietnam but just weren't having boots on the ground. So, so 1970 you're on a ship, you're on a boat out in the, in the, Gulf, of Tonga. In the Gulf of Tonkin That's and right. you're 10 miles offshore or whatever it is, you don't qualify but under this new ruling That's right. you they, may qualify. That under the new ruling you may qualify yeah. and they will take Tell a look. Me and they have ship's logs and they can go through and there are ways to prove that and gotcha. so it, it okay. does. It'll make a big impact on a lot of people's lives. Right. So Navy retirees w would recognize terms like black water, brown water, and blue water. That's right? very much correct. They very much would. So the blue water Navy are the ocean going fleets, if you will, and the yeah. brown water Navy are kind of the riverine forces. Gotcha. So, and, and that expansion now is into some blue water. That is into the blue water fleet now and that yeah. makes and it. And that's huge. It really yeah. is. I, yeah. I don't think people quite realize what an yeah. impactful decision that was. Right. Right. So DIC is complicated too, though. Back to back to that and the surviving spouse or or dependent but children. That that's really a, a potentially huge benefit because that so is. If, so if daddy, if my husband died because of an uh, exposure. That's DIC, right? That's DIC, and the and the critical aspect in proving to uh, get a DIC claim approved is the nexus between the cause of death and the service. And so, those pres when we talk about the presumptions with Asian Orange, that makes that burden so much easier on the family because if you had boots on the ground in Vietnam you're presumed to have been exposed to Asian Orange yeah. and then they have a presumptive condition list where it's presumed that you got this disease from that exposure and so the VA understood we need to make this easier for some families but there are some presumption there where there are some claims where there is no presumption and you have to get your medical records together and get doctors exams and prove the nexus do you have to be married to the veteran for a period of time before you're eligible to receive that DIC? Yes, you do. So normally it's you're married to them at the time of death. You've been married to them during the service for that time. Uh, like anything else, divorce affects it and, and divorce can affect things uh, yeah. very difficulty. But the bottom line is if you've been married to them for over a year, it's worth looking into. So let me, let me, let me see if I understand what you just said is, is that Okay, in 1970, you served during, in, say, in Vietnam. Right. And then you got married in like 1980. Yes. So would your spouse still qualify? If you're still married today and you pass gotcha. while married to so that spouse. So you don't spouse? have to be married during while that person no, was not, not, time. No, you don't have yeah. to be married during yeah. this. Okay, time. gotcha. Okay. Okay, so what about eligibility for TRICARE? If you marry a veteran, do you get TRICARE? A, a retiree, not just a veteran, yes, right? Yes, so you'll get it. There'll be an eligibility enrollment period, and so that can be a very positive impact on a family. If you have... Tri uh, TRICARE is health care for veterans. That's correct. Right. And so you can get eligible for TRICARE, and then they have, there's CHAMP VA, and what happens is if you get a divorce with CHAMP VA, that will sever it. Right. And then, or if you get a yeah. remarriage, and then there's a rule before and above 55. Thank, right. thank you, Chris. Yes. 
It's time so, for a break. Is it time for Absolutely a break? Absolutely it is. So. And when we come back, we're going to be talking with a uh, expert on Medicare and Social Security and how that uh, affects marriage. Chris, you can always find on our website.